being sassy right now. Shush. You guys already know it's coffee time. Woo woo. And since it's August, I thought I was finally able to bring out my pumpkin spice cake. Nespresso pods again, and it smells like fall, even though it's really not fall, but I kind of consider it the mini start of fall, so here we go. And aside from the coffee, I'm also working on some new social content for Milton's Instagram page. I photoshopped him into a cup of coffee, and I'm going to call it a Corgi Chino. And I did this inside Photoshop. Let me see if I can pull up the project real fast so yeah here you go so let me zoom in a bit basically i took a separate photo of just him cut his head out of it put him in this coffee cup and then blurred the edges so that it wasn't like a hard line all of this random rambling to say good morning at least when i'm filming this and welcome back to another vlog with maddie and Milan. So today's video, I'm going to be going through later, aka the main portion of it, the biggest supplies that you'll want to get when you're taking home a puppy. Because there are a lot, and I noticed I started out with what I thought I needed, but then as he grew up and things changed, I found that I needed a few other things that I never even thought of. And so today, I'm going to share those with you all. So hopefully, whenever it is time for you to bring home your puppy, you are prepared and stocked for what you need. This isn't to say you won't need to get more things in the future, because you probably will. But just to leave you off on a good starting point so you're not as stressed. And I will mention that all of these products will be in our Amazon shop account, which the link is in the bio. And so you can just go to the, I think it's either Millen's Favorites, or puppy essentials collection and you can shop all the supplies we mentioned directly from there. So definitely check that out and let's get on with the vlog. Milton was neutered three days ago, I should say. And so he is currently chilling. And the hardest thing with him is to just like keep him entertained without overexerting himself and possibly messing up his stitches because he's still just as high energy as he was before just you know with the added struggle of recovering from a surgery so we've invested in a few new toys and things like that to just hopefully keep him more entertained and also just trying to be home more during the day for him as you can see he just went to the door because he's crazy right buddy yeah you're crazy Woo! And other than the recovery donut, he has two medicines that he has to take twice a day. One I think is for inflammation and the other I think is for pain, but I don't remember which one is which. But he actually can take these, like I can just give them to him and he'll eat them so I don't have to hide them anything, which is really nice. And a lot of people might wonder why we did the donut instead of the cone for him. And that's just because he's so short to the ground. Um, a lot of other corgi owners said that when they had the cone on, it's hard for them to eat and drink because they're so low to the ground. So the donut provides basically the same thing, but it doesn't restrict their access to their food and water as much. I mean, it's still annoying to him, but I feel like it's slightly better. And you can find them on Amazon, Petco, PetSmart all those places so if you are about to get your dog spayed or neutered definitely get one of these we've had a good experience with it so far yeah haven't we buddy mm. next up on the weekend routine is making some pancakes for breakfast I love this little dash pancake maker I got they also have a waffle maker and I think it was only maybe 10 or 15 bucks at Target. It was not expensive at all. And then I am using the Kodiak Cakes protein pancake mix, the buttermilk flavor. I also got their anniversary birthday cake flavor, which was pretty good. 
Although I will admit, I think I like the original better, but this one I also found at Target. They're done. Look how beautiful they are. And now we eat. So I'm gonna eat my pancakes and of course drink my coffee. We will check back in later for the actual part of this video, which is going through the puppy supplies. So See you in three, two, one. Hello everyone. So it is officially later and time to go through the puppy essentials haul and everything that I got when we brought Milton home. Now I will admit we did not get all of this at once, but hopefully after watching this video, you will be prepared enough to get this stuff in the beginning and not realize that you need it later. So to make it easy, I've divided this video into a few different sections, like health, training, play, and enrichment, so that you know which categories of items you should get. And so the first section that I'm going to start with is health. First of all, the biggest part of health that you want to be prepared for when you own a dog, and this will vary by the type of dog you have, is their grooming needs. So for their nails, we got a Dremel tool, which is a nail grinder as opposed to a nail clipper. And we chose this tool because the grinder is actually a bit less painful on a dog's nails than the clipper, but it does take longer to do. So with this, you have to train your dog to use it and get used to it. This one we got on Amazon, actually pretty much everything we got on Amazon and after this video, if you head over to the link in our bio, our Amazon shop, you can find all of that stuff. Next are brushes for grooming their coat. So Milton is a corgi and he has a double coat, which means that a few times a year his undercoat sheds a lot. And to comb out the undercoat so the shedding's not as bad, we use a Furminator undercoat rake. There you go. And this is for the medium, medium dog short length coat, I think. I hope I'm saying that right. But basically the way the blade is made, it's able to get the shedding out from the undercoat without disturbing the top coat. We also did get just a regular dog brush like this to just brush him in general. So usually we'll do this one first and then go through with the Furminator undercoat rake. The next part of health is their dental care. So there are going to be a lot of varying opinions on this. Some people brush their dog's teeth. Um, some people just use, you know, like dentist sticks, stuff like that. The system we use because we actually take Milton once a year to actually get his teeth cleaned by his vet is we have this dental rinse, kind of like a mouthwash for dogs. And we got this at Target and you just put it in their water and I mean, I think that helps keep it at bay. And then it's also good to give them things like bones and stuff that can help when they're chewing to kind of get some of that tartar buildup out of their mouths. So Milan's absolute favorite bone is the Benny bone. And this is like the wishbone shape. He's been chewing this ever since he was a puppy and it is his absolute favorite bone ever. I like this because unlike rawhide, it doesn't splinter really. You still do have to wash them when they're chewing it. But this bone holds up for a very long time, and so I really recommend this. <coughs> He's being sassy right now. <coughs> Shush. And I also recommend, <coughs> especially if you're getting a corgi, that you get a pet wipe of some sort. This one we got at our grocery store, but there are a lot of other brands that sell them. And these work just like baby wipes for dogs. Usually after we take him out to go potty or on a walk, we'll wipe him off his paws and his belly with these because since he's so low to the ground, he tends to pick up dirt easier than others. So definitely recommend these. And I mean, this is a specific brand we got, but as I said, there's a lot of others out there. 
And finally, for their health, it's always good to have them on some sort of a flea tick heartworm preventative. The one we use is Trifexis. And this was prescribed by our vet, so this is not something you can get on your own, but your vet will probably recommend one to you when it comes time for them to take that. And now we're moving on to the training portion of puppy essentials. So a lot of this we learned by working with the dog trainer, which is the first thing I honestly highly recommend doing, or just watching videos or downloading an app by a dog trainer. And the trainer we use actually has an app of his own now, it's called Snoot, and I have the link to that in our bio so you can check that out and download it for free. But the first thing that's helpful to have when you're doing any sort of tra training is a treat pouch. So you can clip this to your belt. A lot of times they'll come with like a little like belt that actually goes through here and clips around your waist. And you can put their treats in here, you put like poop bags in this side. And so, and you can also clip like clickers and stuff to it. So this allows you when you're training them to just have something on your holster that you can easily reach in and give without having to carry anything extra. So this is super awesome when you're training, especially if you're doing something like leash walking. Another tip that we learned from our trainer specifically is to have different types of treats depending on what we're training. So we have these treats for when we're doing leash walking with Milton. They're small little salmon nibs, so they're easy to chew while he's walking and they're super smelly to get his attention. And then Milton has had some resource guarding issues. So we got a special kind of treat as well when we're doing resource guarding with him because this makes the resource more high valuable or this makes the treat more high valuable and he's more willing to leave the resource he's guarding. Resource guarding is a serious thing to train though, so I wouldn't do it without the guidance of a trainer. Additionally, it's helpful to have some sort of place or like training mat slash platform that you can use so that your dog knows when that comes out, that is training time, and you can do all of your training with them on that space. I've seen on Amazon these little plastic training platforms go for, you know, over $100. But one thing our trainer recommended to us that's worked great as a way cheaper alternative is to just get like a bath mat with some like texture on it, like this one, and just do the training like that. So this is his training mat. It was like 10 bucks at Target. So cheap alternative that does the same thing. Additionally, when you're training certain tricks that need to be marked by completing a certain action, which is a lot of tricks like down and um, speak and things like that, you can get clickers. And I mean, they're just literally clickers. So when you press the button, it makes a sound. So what you do the minute your dog does the trick correctly is you click and then give them a treat and repeat that. We didn't use this for every trick we did, but we did use them for a few and they'll usually come in sets like this because they have different clicks assigned to them. The next section I'm going to go over is the walking slash going outside section. Most obviously, you want to get your dog a leash. And, uh, let me untangle mine so I can show you. So we got a Biothane leash. Biothane feels like a synthetic leather, leather almost. And I like this better than leather because it's actually pretty weather resistant and sturdy. So if it does rain, you don't have to worry about it getting messed up. Do not get retractable leashes. I repeat, do not get retractable leashes because they offer no control over your dog. So when you want to train them to walk by your side, you literally can't. So whatever you get, just don't get a retractable leash, please. And that is an advice from my trainer. It's also good to get a little poop bag holster like this one and a lot of times the poop bag sets you'll buy at the store will include the holster with them and the bags that go inside. Obviously, so when you're taking your dog for a walk, you can pick up their poop. And you just always want to be stocked with poop bags. So we got the earth rated ones, but there are a lot of other brands that are cheaper than this. These are just the ones we have at the moment, so never run out of those. That's not a good thing. Um, just always be stocked on these like toilet paper. And the next two things I'm going to share are both 
for giving them food and water on the go. So this one is our collapsible food and water container. It's by Petique. Oh, yeah, I'm holding that right. It's by Petique. And I really like this. I did not get this actually from the brand. I got this in this box that I subscribed to. But when you open it, it has the two sides like this. And they pop up just like, you know, regular bowls. And then when you're done, you just collapse them back. And they also snap out so you can wash them. And if you're just taking your dog on a walk and you're living in a hot place like Florida, which is where we live, it's good to have a on-the-go water container. So this one is super lightweight. It snaps onto his leash with this little clasp. And when you unzip it, it's a little bowl like this, and then you just fold it back inside. This brand is Kurgo. And as you're training your dog to walk by your side, there are a few management style body tools you can use to prevent them from pulling on the leash. I have one here as an example, and this is one of like the more extreme ones if your dog is really bad at pulling. It's a gentle leader. It kind of looks like a horse harness, but for dogs. So it like, this part goes over their nose and then this part clips behind their head. So it literally looks like your dog is wearing a horse harness. And they can still open their mouth with it. They can still, you know, breathe with it. So it's not a bite muzzle by any means, but it does help a lot with the pulling in addition to just training them to walk by their side. The next section I want to talk about is enrichment toys. There are a few ways you can give your dog mental stimulation during the day if you can't take them to a dog park or actively play with them. And these are just a few of the ways you do that. So this one is more of a health way, but it can also be an enrichment way, and it's called a slow feeder bowl. So you just put your dog's food in this, and they come in all sorts of shapes and styles, but this just encourages them to eat slower and also makes them work a bit more for their food too. So I consider that kind of an enrichment thing. The other thing that we love, that we use a lot when he was a puppy, not so much anymore, is a wobble Kong. So it's made by the brand Kong. And you basically can unscrew this and put the food inside here and give them their food. So like we would used to give Milton his breakfast in this. And they have to use their noses and their paws to knock treats out of it. So it's partially also kind of a slow feeder, but this one is even more so an enrichment activity because it forces them to use their um, noses and their paws to get their food out. We also have two enrichment puzzles for Milton, which are great actual sources of enrichment. So the very first one we got him was this one, which you've probably seen before, it's quite common. And basically you can take the pieces out and put treats inside. These also lift up to put treats inside. And when this is out, they slide back so you can put more treats inside there. And this is just another way to work your dog's mind and help them eat slower. And this one is a more advanced level enrichment toy, but it's the same concept as the other one, except for this one, you twist the bones and they have to learn, use their noses to twist it, which then unlocks this treat compartment. This one, I don't know if Milton is still fully figured out, but it is a hard one, so I understand why. There's tons of other dog toys you can get. Most of them do involve making them work to get a treat out. But this all makes their mind work and uh, teaches them to think. The final two pieces of this are too big to show you here. So I'm actually gonna grab the camera and show you. So two pieces of puppy essential equipment that I highly, highly recommend getting is a crate, which is this. And the one we got, as most, come with a divider. So when they're little, you can make it smaller as they're learning their potty training and everything. And the bigger they get, the more you move the divider back until you no longer need it. 
So Nolan's had this ever since he was a puppy, but he's just grown into it and now he no longer needs the divider inside. And then this thing, which is folded up right now, is a playpen. So during the day, when you can't watch your puppy's every move, you really should have them in some sort of containment like this playpen, which folds out into a pretty decent size and basically keeps them contained when you can't watch them. It does not prevent accidents though, so if you're trying to use that as a replacement for a crate, it will not work. Trust me, we've tried. We trained Milton with his crate by throwing treats in there, and so now he knows when we put a treat in there that it's time to go in. So let me grab one. Sometimes he's sassy, but I throw it in and then I wait. He will usually go inside. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to go in with his donut. Good boy, good boy. You can go in. Good boy. And then you close the crate door. And you start by only putting them in for short durations of time when you're at the apartment and then you increase the duration and you also will do it when you're like in front of the crate and when you're not in front of the crate so that they get the general idea that the crate doesn't mean that you're leaving. And we also taught him to only leave the crate when we say that it's okay to. And that's it for our Puppy Essentials haul. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and made your list of things to get for your new pup. Congratulations on becoming a puppy owner more than anything. It's a unique journey that I am so glad I was able to go on with Milton. And I'm still going on because he is only nine months old. He's not fully grown yet. And we have learned a lot on this journey and I'm sure you will too. But hopefully this video gets you started on the right foot to becoming the best dog owner. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone so that we can continue to grow our Corgi family community. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.